Greetings, Earthlings. Today I want to go over one of my favorite types of questions, which is how to find the max number of intersection points or regions. There, there, are, very, there are several variations of these types of questions. And as I mentioned in, the, in a few videos back in the how to develop mathematical and geometric intuition, this is one of those sorts of conceptual uh, builders. So you don't want to just do like number crunching stuff where you just have to find, uh, do calculations and plug and chug. You also want to do very abstract problems. Now, although these do require a number at the end, it's a very conceptual type of problem. So I think that we're going to get a lot of mileage out of examining these questions. All right, so we're going to look at four questions. Uh, actually, I already lied. We're only going to look at three. This fourth one is going to be a challenge question for you guys. I'll give you some brief thoughts. And throughout all of these, the key ideas will be down here. So, so let's discuss a specific question and see how this stuff plays out. So the question is, if you have six lines in the plane, so let's say we have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, what's the maximum number of intersection points you can get? Now, I mean, I tried drawing a thing here, but as you could tell, so how many points? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think we can do a little bit better just because, the, like, especially like over here, I have these lines being kind of parallel. So, um, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure we're doing our best over here. So, for, or, or, sorry, let's say these two lines. This top line, if we angle it a bit, we can get it to cross this line and maybe even that line. And same with these two. So, if what you don't, it's okay to start just trying to draw stuff. And in fact, that might be kind of like your very first step. As you start drawing this a little bit, you're very quickly gonna understand that just trying to get the diagram right immediately, especially if this is even larger, like let's say it's like seven or eight lines, or God forbid, like 15 lines, you're gonna find it's really tricky to get it right, right off the top. So through sort of experience and hitting our head against the wall, hitting our heads against the wall, we're gonna realize we don't wanna to try to just jump at the solution. So what the, this is where the key ideas come in. How do we think about this methodically? We, I mean, maybe you get lucky, you, need, you get a really good diagram and your friend gets fewer points, but that's, it's kind of hit or miss. You don't wanna just hope you get more points. Now, like I said, actually another approach is to what I'm gonna discuss is you do start with the diagram and you gradually try to improve it. Like, you, like I said, you try to angle this to hit more points. So you can tweak a bad diagram. But um, there are certain situations where you can't tweak your way into the solution because you're already so far off course. So with that in mind, but that's actually an additional great approach to, to having your arsenal. All right, so here are the two ideas the two to three key ideas. We are gonna to try to solve a simpler problem and we're gonna use what's called iterative thinking. Now, solving a simpler problem is very related to iterative thinking. So they're, they're kind of like what one, the simpler kind of includes it, but as we'll see in this problem number four, which I'll leave for you guys, they're not necessarily the same thing. All right, so this is a much broader idea. So. We're going to try to simplify the problem. Professor Mahajan talks about this, uh, or Mahajan, I think, um, as using analogy. And I'll, please make sure to check out the description. There will be some great links, especially on problem number four. All right, so he discussed this as thinking by analogy, or we can just think of it as looking for patterns. The terms don't matter too much, so whatever, whatever makes your life better, um, they're not exactly the same, but Whichever of these works better for you guys is what you should start to think about it as. So we can create a simpler problem. Now, what's simpler than six lines? Six lines, we said it's too hard. We don't, we don't know how to do it. So let's try to, I lost my eraser, but um, why don't we do five lines? Well, five lines is still not very simple. Can we do better? Four, well, let's, why don't we make it two? Now, one line, is not very interesting because there's nothing going on. But we can even start with one line. But I think two lines is when we, we're starting to get into it. So that's this iterative thinking idea. 
And by the way, if you've been following the previous videos in the Art of Math playlist, it's kind of related to building a hammer or growing our solution gradually. So let's try to add a second line. So I think everybody would agree that's definitely the best we can do with two lines. Now let's try to add a third line. So a third line, again, I think you guys would agree we can't do any better than three points. But let's stop to think. This is a small enough case where we can get a lot of mileage out of this iterative thinking. Let's think about why did we get two points just now with our line number three? Well, these two points are from hitting the two existing lines. Ah, so let's go back to our first, let's call this like line number one and line number two. So when we added the second line, we got this new point and we only got one new point because there was only one existing line to hit. Our third line can hit the existing two lines and if we add a fourth line, it's gonna be a little, let's say, I'll add it here. Now we can hit three lines, so that's one, two, three new points. So, so far we have one point for the second line, plus two points for the third line, plus three points for the fourth line, and I think you guys get the pattern from there. So it'll be plus four points, plus five points. So um, it'll be for the second line, for the third line, for the fourth line, for the fifth line, for the sixth line. If we add that all up, we should have a maximum of 15 possible points. Now, this is the third key idea. This is not as important as these two, but it's something that might trouble you guys. So in general, I, I do want you to get, have all three of these ideas. You might say, okay, well, I understand conceptually how this pattern can keep going, but if I try to draw it, it's gonna, it's really, it's gonna get basically, it's going to get harder and harder to draw it because we're going to need a larger and larger diagram. So you might ask yourself, 15 is the maximum, but can we actually achieve it? Can we attain that maximum? So, and that's a really good point because sometimes you can't actually achieve the maximum. That's just an upper bound. So here's a, I'm, I want to give you guys a nice argument. Well, we can draw it. If I, if I zoom in on this, I can add even like yet another line and it'll give you 15 points but I'm not gonna even try to draw it here's the argument let's say we added that six line right now and well I'm, I'm gonna actually draw it so let's say I draw it and like in the beginning it happens to be not giving us a lot of intersection points so let's say it's like parallel to lot this line number two and so potentially Let's say we fall a little bit short. The key idea here that's really powerful is we can perturb the line. So we, we can move it infinitesimally. So in other words, instead of being perfectly parallel, we're going to nudge it a little bit. And so now it's going to hit number two. So that argument is going to so like you said, essentially, what don't we want to happen? We don't want three lines going through the same point. If that happens, we take our third line, let's say this is our third line, we just nudge it a little bit and it goes eh. So now that third line gets us new points. So that is an argument that shows that we can actually achieve this maximum. All right, so that's the six line problem. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. And this idea of, of growing our solution is the iterative thinking approach. Like what happens if we add a little bit more, a little bit more at every step? It's also related a little bit to induction, but that'll be at a later time. Now, and notice in our case, this idea of iterative thinking coincided, it also was a simpler problem. We didn't just start with a six line problem. All right, let's try another problem. We have four circles, so how many intersection points can we have maximum with four circles? So let's say we start with one. 
Well, we're assuming also they're, they're not the same circle because then the answer would be inf infinite. If I just draw the second circle right over it, they touch everywhere. So let's say the radius has to be slightly different or it has to be the um, same radius but it has to be moved, moved around. So let's say our second circle is like here. So you'll notice from this iterative thinking again, we're growing our solution. There's only two points that two circles can touch at. So from this idea, once we try to add the third circle, what's going to happen? Well, we can only hit the existing two circles in two points apiece. So we have two already, so it's going to be two. So in other words, circle number one gave us zero. Circle number two gave us two new points. Circle number three gave us four new points. I could draw it for, it's not too bad, so let's say that's it. We have one, two, three, four. I'm not going to keep trying to draw it, but with the same argument, you could see that if I add another circle, it's going to be six. And like I said, if you're concerned that we can't actually attain all those points, you just wiggle your circle a little bit, maybe make it a little, move it left, right, up, down, or make the radius a tiny bit larger, smaller, and you will destroy any three circles that happen to share an intersection points, yielding more points. All right, so that's going to be 12. All right, so that's exercise number two. Let's try to do number three. All right, so I made this one up. Um, number two, the one we just did actually happens to be a math contest problem. But this one I just made up. You, if you want to practice this, you can make up any hodgepodge of shapes. That's actually a way to generate a lot more practice questions. And I haven't even scratched the surface. I'm sure you guys can uh, come up with some pretty cool questions. All right, so three parabolas. A parabola is this U-looking shaped thing. It's not quite a U because it doesn't go perfectly vertical. It keeps going out more and more, but it kind of looks like a U. So for our purposes, just and the equation would be Y equals X squared or any other quadratic function. So how many of these can we get? Okay, so let's, we have one parabola. Let's add a second parabola. So let's say my second one is like this. It's a little narrower. All right, so just from that iterative thinking, we know that we can only add two, assuming they're not the same parabola, of course. We can only add, at most, two new points from, like with every new parabola against the old ones. So that means if we add a third parabola, let's say I'll just draw, this is not too bad to draw, you'll get four because it's two apiece. It hits the first one and two and the second one and two. So, so far we have two plus four just like in number two with the circles. All right, so now we have one circle, and we have to think, is a circle going to be fundamentally different than a parabola or not? So let's examine in isolation a circle and a parabola. So if I do this, we can see, well, that's not a great looking circle, but we can see that a circle can hit a parabola in four points. So that means if we place, if we design this diagram really nicely, we could potentially get the circle hitting each of the parabolas in four points apiece. So that's three times four. I'll just write that out. So that's 12. So potentially, we might be able to get 18. Now, is that actually, a, like, so let's say if I were to draw it, this won't be a very circular looking thing, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing anyway. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, so that didn't quite yield the 12. So at this point, you want to ask yourself, is that 12 attainable 
like if we move the circle down, you might see, okay, well, we can get this to, oh, um, well, let's double check. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So notice where, where are we missing points? We are only two short. We, instead of getting all 12, if you look at this parabola, I'll just make it fatter, this one right here. We only got two points over here. We never got two more points out of the intersection. So that means if we, are to, if we were to change this shape just slightly so that this dips down, let's say like here, then we can get two more points. So, and you can see it can get a little tricky because I'm trying to draw it for you guys live. But that perturbation argument, or if you don't want to alter the parabola, you can also mess with a circle. But the point is, we will, this makes me feel pretty confident that we can actually achieve, if I did this added up correctly, 6 plus 12, 18 points. So if that's not clear, play around with it. And notice, it can get really tricky on the diagram. So it's totally okay to just pick a case in isolation, a parabola with a parabola, a parabola with a circle, and scale it up from there. So don't, don't try to just land on the solution. The example I like is if I asked you guys to jump 30 feet in one jump, I don't think any of you can do that. But if I said you get 20 jumps, you can make a lot of little jumps, most of you can do that. All right, so that's three nice problems. Let me say a few words about number four. All right, so number four, I would say, is about uh, two to three times more difficult than these problems, but it's the same, kind of, same kinds of ideas. So for those of you that just kind of wanted the basics and you just want a decent math foundation, there's no, there's no need really to go num to number four. You can check it out. For those of you that really want something a little more advanced to push yourself to, to a, you know, you're really interested in math, science, engineering, study problem number four. I'm not going to do a whole treatment on it just because I've included uh, resources in the description that do a great job, especially there's a video by Professor Wildberger. And although I might have like a tiny bit to add, I, I think he would largely cover it. Um, the only, my only note, if you're going to watch his video, is there's another way of reasoning that gets you to the same answer. So, th so there's more stuff, but his presentation is great. So let's understand five planes in 3D. You might think, all right, so if I draw this sheet, but imagine that's in 3D. So now we're going to... So that's our second plane. So that creates four regions. We have one, two, three, four. Now if you put another one that goes this way and goes down, hopefully you'll, you can visualize it'll create eight. It'll chop each of the four into two. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and four in the bottom. So you might think, oh, okay, well, it's just, it's just powers of two. The answer is 32. Well, hint, the answer is not 32. So it, hopefully that gets your curiosity going. I won't tell you how to do it. And so I'll give you guys two options. Either just think about it for yourselves. If you want, you can pause the video because I'm about to give you a tiny hint. It's not a major hint, but it's a sizable hint. Uh, me medium, low, medium hint. All right. For this number four problem, these are going to be slightly different. So we are still going to use our iterative thinking, but we're also going to simplify the problem, which in this case won't be the same thing. So let's simplify the problem not just by taking four planes or three or two or one. We're going to take our, a totally different problem and make this in 2D. So now we're on a flat sheet of paper. And maybe instead of being planes, we are now doing lines. So here's a line. So you created two regions of space. You create a second line. Now you have four regions of space. You do a third line. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the point is you should already have some ideas of like, oh, it's not just powers of two. Now to do this, you will, well, check out the, think about it for yourselves first. Check out all the resources in the description. 
and as an idea, try to break down the problem into a simpler problem and then grow your simpler problem and possibly use iterative thinking to solve the original problem. And this is what some might be referred to as the Steiner plane problem. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. That's kind of a challenge thing. Hopefully the, the fact that it's not 32 got you guys curious. I recommend you at least peruse the links in the description. And let me know, let me know what you guys think if you found this useful. If you are aware of other cool questions such as these, let me know in the comments. Just and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're we're gonna keep going with the stuff and keep doing geometry. Alright, see you guys.